Alright, so here we are in our third video. <coughs> Alright, so we have our references set up. It's locked. I can't select it. I have a cube in the middle. Um, but what I need to do is I need to save the file first. So I'll press Control S, or you can go to File, Save Scene, and we know we want to save it in scenes not just any folder, inside the piano folder since it should be inside scenes and I will give it today's date and I will call this piano base mesh maybe give it a version so this is going to be version 1 sweet now it's safe, I can see it up there and then let's start to model so I'll start with the side view. Press R. I'm gonna try to scale it. Um, what I'm trying to model is this part here first. So we'll take one step at a time. First we'll do this part, and then we'll move on to the next. Right. So that's kind of okay. I'll right mouse button and hold and choose vertex. I'll select these two not these two now uh, I want to say something about this you have to be careful what you're selecting inside view and how you select it so I'm gonna let's look at this or, or maybe I'll just bring up two views at the same time side and perspective good so we're looking at this guy here huh? if I were to click and drag like that you'll notice that what I get is four vertices if you look at in the perspective view I get this four vertices so it's really important um, in the way the way you select things from any particular viewport try not to kind of just click on one vertex what you're doing there is if you decide to move it you will be moving only one vertex and not the one at the back and that's going to be a problem you're gonna get something that looks like this and you're wondering why is it only one thing that's moving so try as best as possible if you want both vertices do that instead click and drag in my case, I want all four, so I click and drag all this in side view, so I get all four. Uh, well, it's just that I wanted to do this, you know, just push it up a bit, and that's pretty much it. <coughs> and let's just do this one, pull up. So I'll select those vertices. So maybe also as a, you know, since you're just beginning to do this thing maybe it's a good idea to have all four views or if you want you can do like me I have two views and then I change the panels here and maybe change this to side this one to perspective to get you know the side and the perspective view at the same time right I'll just enlarge this I'll go back to object mode we're gonna scale this down not bad uh, tell you what, I want to change the pivot. So press D, it's going to go into my change pivot mode, and I'll enable this arrow. And I will hold C that enables that thing snap to curve. I'll need the mouse button here, so need the mouse button and move the mouse a little bit so it will snap to that curve. Let go of C, press D again, and it'll exit change pivot mode now I can move this guy I know I want it to snap to this grid here so with this enabled I'm gonna press X that will enable toggle my snap to grid middle mouse button on the grid here middle mouse button and move it a bit and it'll snap there nice right mouse button choose vertex select all that remember we're selecting all of the vertices on the side here and let's just bring it in a bit like that sweet all right 
what do we need to model next if you notice here um, we have this thing kind of slanted that way so I'm going to introduce this new tool which is called insert edge loop that can be found here under mesh tools I'll go to insert edge loop here I'll choose the options box because what I want to do is I want to reset it once that's reset close this you'll notice when you choose the insert edge loop tool you get this triangle shape like, like an arrow uh, without the shaft so we're going to kind of click on the edge here and that will bring us this edge loop it means that the edges go around the mesh so I'll click that and hold and I'll place it somewhere here you'll see what I'm gonna do with it now I'll press Q which is actually my select tool and that will exit the insert edge loop mode right mouse button choose vertex select that which is all that and we'll just bring it in here like so sweet now we have a slanted body for the piano next we are going to do the top part so for that I need to choose the face so I'll select this face here and I will use extrude for this um, part of the piano so I'll go to edit mesh and I'm gonna choose extrude the option box at the end here and for a start I will reset it just like that cool now everything's okay I'll click apply probably close this so now we have extrude and for those of you who've tried this in the lab you have to be careful with the extrude tool so in this case I kind of extrude and push it out like that and I press Q to exit okay what I was talking about is let me just undo and I think you never you won't know it until you've done it so I'm just checking to see whether there's overlapping faces in the same spot right now there isn't it's just one face if I select this face I move it around it's just one face what I'm talking about is if you kind of use the shortcut which is control E by default and then you you know extrude and then you accidentally press something like press Q or do something like that right and then you say oh okay let's do it again so I control E and extrude again and then I'll do that and then I will kind of you know try to I don't know do this and then I notice hey, how come you know it's doing that how come that's one more face down here you know why because earlier remember what you did was you might have extruded without unknowingly uh, doing anything see it's it was there but it was sitting on the same spot and it didn't move it's just like duplicating but not moving it so this is duplicating a face but not moving it at all so you get something like that overlapping edges uh, faces so let me just undo that so what you need to do is you need to undo to a point that you think that okay that's it yes that is what I wanted and then start to extrude it all over again so if you're doing it properly hopefully you should you know extrude and then if you see the manipulator straight away pull it out if you happen to do something else and you forget about it it's best to kind of undo and start it all over again so I have that just checking select that move it so I know this is actually one face so it's not a duplicate cool Right. if you didn't understand the word I said earlier that's fine I'm sure you will encounter that problem one day as I have when I started modeling way back so right now I am going to do this part here which comes out a bit and 
for that, I will select these three faces at the, at the top. Press 4 to show wireframe. Press 5 again. Press 6 perhaps to show all the references. Alright, so with those things selected, I will extrude again. So I'll go to Edit Mesh, Extrude. If you notice here, I have my shortcut as alternate E because I changed the shortcuts in my hotkey settings. So don't bother. By default, this should be Control E. So anyway, extrude. Alright, so we have the manipulator gizmos coming up. Let's just pull it out like so. Alright, so this is what we get. It's not too bad. It's just, you know, this part here, that part, is a bit sang it. That too. So I'll press Q to exit that. What I'm going to do now is I'll bring up my four panel views. Ah, You see what I did there? I forgot to change it in this view. So I'll right mouse button, go to object mode, and I'll press R to scale it. So let's scale it properly here. That's looking about right, I think. Yep, right. So that's okay. Now we're going to do the top part. Right. So I know this is saying it, so let's just straighten it again. I'll go to vertex. Click and drag all that, press R, so we're going to scale it in this way so it becomes a straight line, right, and let's just bring it here, right, cool, alright, um, and we'll do the same with this guy, so like here, R, scale it in, bring it in, So, I know that it was looking all okay in this view here, in the side view. But here, I will kind of realign it. Why? Um, because I want to kind of try to match these lines here. So, I'll do just that. So, I will select all that. Control shift select all that as well. Press F. We have all these lines, uh, vertices selected. I'll just bring this down here and press Control, Hold, and select that. Press W, move it here. Right, not too bad. Um. see yeah I'll say that's fine for now okay all right so that's good okay uh, that's fine all right um, I think what we'll do next is this part instead of that I'll save that for the last so let's just do this part. What I'm trying to do here, let me just explain. I'm trying to kind of get that curve right. So I know for that, what I need is I need my insert edge loop tool. And therefore, I'll go to mesh tools, insert edge loop here. I'll choose the options box because I want to say I want multiple edge loops. And looking at this thing here, it could probably use, uh, let me see, perhaps uh, one, two, three, four, five, perhaps. So let's give it five. All right, it's cool. Close that. So I'm going to click on this edge here. You'll see what happens here uh, in the perspective view. Now you'll see that it's going to create edge loops all around our object on this edge here. Let go and you get all that. Sweet. Now what are we going to do next is we're going to choose vertex. And we'll try to kind of match what we see here. So I'll select all these points. So that's going to select the front and the back. Bring it in. Control 
unselect that, bring that in, control unselect that, bring that in, and we're gonna repeat until we match what we see here in the reference. Of course, this reference is a bit off in this view, so you have to kind of um, decide what you're gonna do. Alright, so that's looking kind of okay here. Could perhaps use a bit more work, uh, but I'll say that's okay for now. Alright, now let's go to this view. So this is a bit off now, so I'll just select that. Control Shift select that one as well. Control Shift select that one. And let's just move it here. So I want it to. I'll snap it later perhaps. So that's looking kind of okay. And I'll say you guys, you go back in. Right. And I'll zoom in here. So what are we gonna do now is we are going to try to match what we see here, pull up. Mm, I'll see just do this and then we'll bring it out again all right so that's kind of okay so let's select all that bring that in if you're unsure of what you're doing you can just open up the perspective view as well and you can see what's going on as you move these vertices in all right unselect that bring it in and select press control and select control and select and one more perhaps yep it's not too bad right so right mouse button go to object mode now you have <coughs> it curving from that side as well as on this side so this is what you want to achieve basically you can switch on wireframe on shaded but I'm not sure whether you can see it properly yeah we can kind of right so you just need to kind of um, do some finesse here like select those parts and say you know move it in front of here a bit um, you can also tweak things and try you know if you you're not happy with what you see here just tweak it a bit uh, no problem straying away from the um, reference once you already know what you want I mean this one as well I'm not really happy with this I might say you know I don't want it to look like that perhaps you guys should go that way a bit yeah. Yeah, tweak it a bit just so that it looks nice. I know it's not much of a difference, but it does help. Sweet. So we're good here. Um, how long is the video? It's 18 minutes. So let me just stop here. And we're going to continue with the other parts in a bit. Um, before we do that, maybe I should just set this guy and snap it here. Alright, so I'm gonna um, stop the video and let's continue in the next one.